Uh, the oil's off when my motor's naturally aligned now. I've had it for about half an hour. And uh, I press the whole resealed. Nice and cleaned up. Refilled it with oil because the old oil leaked out because if I sealed it at the bottom it wasn't very good. It likes to spill a bit of oil out now. Whew, messy bastard. Nice and warm. It's uh, turns over a lot easier now. It's a lot easier to, um, to turn, which is good. It's freed up. Anyway, I'm just going to make that little bracket go across there underneath here. I've dragged the motor and bolted down and clamped the motor down hard. And that'll be a, that sort of there. The pull is nice and straight though, which is good. The belt, uh, the belt's not going to come off. And I did this up loosely, I ran it for a little bit until it straightened up and started spinning and stopped it, then tightened it there. And that self aligned. Finally, got around the cut in this batch shape too. It's time to. Uh, Get the cells out, they are buggered. Then the positive plates are a bit swelled up and warped, the negative plates are non existent. That's one shagged up battery. Anyway, it's time to gut it and clean it all out. Ready for the uh, capacitors to go in there. Been a long, uh, long term project that one. Hey, they did not come out without a fight. It just fell apart. The plates are actually quite thin for the Durant's 4x4 battery. I was expecting the plates to be a bit thicker. And there's those bits of plastic in there. Plastic spaces which um, support the plates, having the bumps and that. It's got extra reinforcement for um, four-wheel driving. Hence the Durant's range of batteries. It's a plastic they put in there to help hold everything in place so the plates don't vibrate too much when you hit the bumps and go forward driving. It's interesting the technology it uses. Yeah, all that brown stuff is what's left in the negative plates. And the bits of white, like you see here, is the ox lead oxide, the um, salt, lead sulfate exposed to the air over time as it dries, it goes white. So it's obviously oxidised. A little bit of piss out, a bit of water left in it. I've been seeing it several times too. So it'd be very weak um, concentration of acid in there. But these plates of cells are swollen up so bad, it's hard to get the bloody things out. I have to get pretty destructive in this one, I think, to get those out. They are not coming out without a fight. They are some fat cells. I think I get the concept now. What I think what Exide have done, what it looks like, they put silicon in the cells here. Goes down the sides of the plates. There's some there, more in there, they're stuck together, see? So in there, we have silicon in between here, holding all these uh, separators together on both sides. Some on the outside here. And that's a bit of there on the wall there. They've actually glued them in place into the battery casing. And that yeah, secures them quite nicely. So that's how what makes a four-wheel drive battery a four-wheel drive battery by gluing and securing all this in the case so the plates don't move and vibrate and break off internally that's all with normal car batteries in a bush bomb paddock bashing doing lots of joy riding over bumps and stuff your batteries don't like it because those plates will vibrate and shake and they break off here at the interconnecting points so here's what Exide have done to counteract that they put silicon in, in all the um, tight, uh, in order the gaps on both sides and in the case and that's what's hold these together and that's why I couldn't pull them out and you can see a bit clearly there the silicon pretty uh, clever idea actually so all I've got to do to get them out I'll have to get the pliers squeeze the uh, crushed and remaining lead that's in there a couple of times shake them a bit and then they'll come out that's an interesting point of concept very clever. And there you go. They're pretty much all the same too. The thickness, the physical thickness of those plates is exactly the same as a normal battery. So, as you can see the Exide design, ordinary design there, ordinary shape. It's supercharger's design. It's a diamond shape. Interesting. And you can see it's a centimetre baffle that the, cell, the plates, the cells sit on. And it's got all that for the uh, over the lifetime of the battery for the bits of lead to fall off and accumulate. 
if there's gaps in there fill up. Obviously the battery's stuffed, it's short to plates here, and that's it, your battery's gone. That's quite interesting. When you tear them apart and learn how the, uh, the basics of batteries between the normal and four-wheel drive batteries, they're pretty much exactly the damn same inside. But they have a few little bits added like that, for example, so gold, calcium, they're all the same car batteries. Those don't have uh, reinforcers in them, I don't think. Because they don't seem to last as long as what the Eagles Exide ones did. Anyway, let's uh, continue tearing it apart and clean it up and get it ready for the capacitors. I also couldn't help but notice the actual die they punched these holes out with when I left the uh, plastic bits in the bottom of the battery. Then it assembled it anyway. Didn't bother getting the um, off cuts out. <laughs> and again, they did try to cut costs all they can Exide because they wanted to keep, keep making batches in Australia and they did till uh, at the end of this year I mean, it's, you're going to call it quits unfortunately anyway, I've got a lot of mess to clean up all that's to be contained, put in the bucket ready to take, actually maybe that one here i got more of a chance I'm going to try and rescue all those plates mold them all down, clean them up, melt them down in that t uh, steel can Make a big ass heavy um, solid lead slug. Be a good paperweight. You yeah, haven't done a good lead meltdown in a long, long time. You're gonna get all the impurities out when you melt all this down. But I could use a bit of a weight to um, hold things that are glued down. The odd, there's the odd job I'd use a lead weight for, so handy to have. Anyway, let's uh, clean that battery up. That's by far one of the cleanest batches I've ever dissected. This thing had a lot of gunk and it was hard to wash all the lead, sulf lead sulfate and bloody lead dioxide out of this. And it had bugger all lead dioxide and lead sulfate stuck in the plastic. It's by far the cleanest and greenest batchy, I think. So these batches really did care when they um, come to this way. So I'm not that bad for the environment because look at that. That rinsed that quite clean. All that stuff there, when it's the dry part of the cells, that's lead and there it forms like a gummy grease. It's hard to wash off, so let that dry and get an old paper towel, preferably an old rag actually. Be the safest way to clean all that off. I'll get much of that lead sulfate off as I can. Get all traces of that stuff off and the lead dioxide. That way all the toxins are gone. I'm going to start scraping all these bits of silicon off. And these things at the bottom of the cells are plugs, which have been welded in from the factory. Interesting how they've got plugs in the bottom as well. They're all numbered to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. <laughs> they numbered the cells in even order on this one. There we are, it's going to make a pretty good, uh, pretty good capacitor bank going to fit inside this. It's going to look, look pretty good. And yeah, just finish off the... Uh, so I've got to strip that down too. Yeah. That's the next project. Anyway, here's the best method to cut open the car battery, depending on the design. 99% of the time, you'll have a gap that you fit your saw between, you cut right on that line where it's welded. Take the caps off, because I want to, um, in my case, I'm going to preserve the caps in their full originality and score them back on so it looks authentic. But to cut one of these batches open, the best way to do it is through the weld line. Cut right through there where it's welded. You fit your saw in there and that gap and just cut. These ones here are a bit different, but you just go as close to this as you can. This one here you have to go from it's welded here, so you have to go right under there. But the best type of these ones here because it's got a bit of rigidity there, adds rigidity to the plastic. So you got this little bit of um, lip to work with, makes it all much stronger. Anyway, maybe enough for now. Thanks for watching.